Hello everybody, it's Dale from Erndales. Welcome to my channel. So today we're going to continue on with our sock making project. This is going to be the second video in the series of how to make a sock. And this video, um, if you missed the first one, it was the video just before this one. I just want to put a little bit of a disclaimer in here. This is not a how to learn to knit uh, video or series. This is for people who already know how to knit to learn to to learn how to knit a sock. There's a lot of, of knitters who have knit a lot of different things, but they just can't seem to master a sock. So this is for the beginner sock knitter, not the beginner knitter. Um, and while I'm saying that, the th you should know a few stitches. You should know how to cast on and cast off. You should know how to knit and purl and do and knit two together or purl two together or do a slip slip knit and and a kitchener stitch but really you don't you don't really need to do that we'll learn that one at the end but if you don't know how to do those then you better fix that situation before you try a sock because you're going to have to know those stitches to do a sock so today we are going to tackle the dreaded heel and that is the area of the sock where everybody seems to panic and say I can't do it and to be honest with you you're going to you're going to slap yourself after you finish this because this the heel is actually very easy and when um in the first video I showed you the different the three parts of the heel and so I'm going to knit along with you using the pattern that we're using, which is the Super Simple Sock Pattern by Ellison Sarnoff. We are going to do that heel, but along the way, I'm going to talk to you about different heels that you can knit in the same way, but just using a few different stitches. Um, so we're going to now carry on from where we left off on the first video and we are going to tackle them heels. Okay, we're back. So we've, on the last video, remember, I gotta see if I can get the camera in a little bit closer here. Okay, so on the last video, if you remember, we learned the cuff, which should be two inches. My cuff is this, is this white part, because I'm, I'm doing a sample, so I don't want, I didn't want to do a two inch cuff, but we did a two inch cuff of knit two, purl two, and then we just started knitting um, stocking stitch in the round. So just we were just knitting in the round. And that is your leg. So the, the gray part is your cuff and the yellow part is your leg. Again, <clears throat> I only did this much of a leg because this is a sample. So you're going to be knitting your leg however long you want it. Now, if you wanted to make a shorty cuff, uh, a shorty sock, you know, like a, a little sport shorty sock, this size leg actually is perfect. I would have made it the cuff a little bit longer, but um, this works really fine for making a shorty cuff. And that's the other thing about patterns. You know, you as you after you've learned how to make a sock, you can adjust the pattern for all kinds of different types of socks. You can you can make them you know, really long to go over your knees. You can make them really short just to be, you know, little um, shorty socks for in, in your sneakers. So there's a lot of things you can do. But for now, this is where we're going. So we are now going to start the heel. Remember, we marked the first stitch on our, on our first needle. And so I just put another stitch marker there because I want to show you something once we start the heel. So we're going to be working on the heel flap and I'm just going to show you again. The heel flap is this square right here. I got a different pair of socks. These are, these are actually a pair of socks that I've been wearing for several years. And as you can see, they're not worn out at all. So the heel flap is this part right here, this square. So on, on this side, there's, um, 16 stitches and then on this side there's 16 stitches so we're going to make like an oblong so it'll be from here to here both sides so in order to do that 
what we're going to do is we're going to start on needle one on the first stitch and I'm going to change colors because I wanted to show you um, I wanted to show you the different parts of a sock so I'm going to do my cheater color change again like I did before don't do it this way you want to always join wool in a proper manner but I'm just doing this just to save time and I'll cut this one off make sure I cut the right one off okay so we're going to start on the heel flap so we're going to knit 16 stitches on this first needle the first 16 stitches we're going to knit okay so just gonna pull that back one two three four five i hope maybe it's better if i do it down here it's a very odd angle six seven eight nine ten eleven twelve thirteen fourteen fifteen sixteen okay we've put sixteen stitches on our spare needle now we have four stitches left remember there's 20 stitches on needle one so now we're going to take these four stitches and put them on to needle two. We're just going to slide them off of one onto needle two. So needle two had 24 stitches, so now needle two has 28 stitches. Okay, now we're going to turn our work and we are going to purl back those 16 stitches that we just um, knit. So we're going to purl back these 16 stitches onto the spare needle. And now we are going to purl 16 more stitches from needle three. So needle three also has 20 stitches on it. So we're going to take another 16 off and knit them onto with these other 16. Okay, so one, two, three, four five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten, eleven, twelve, thirteen, fourteen, fifteen, sixteen. Okay, so we still have four stitches left on needle three. So now we're going to put these four onto the end of the other end of needle two. Just gonna slide them over. So now needle two has it started with 24, we added four, it was 28, and now we just added four more. So needle two now has 32 stitches. And this is still needle one, because you still have your marker here. Your needle one has 32 stitches, but let's count to make sure that we have the right amount, because that's important. You want to have the right amount of stitches. So two, four, six, eight, 10, 12, 14, 16, 18, 22, 4, 6, 8, 32. Well, if that one's 32, this one has to be. 
2, 4, 6, 8, 10, 12, 14, 16, 18, 20, 2, 4, 6, 8, 32. Okay, we are now going to forget about this needle 2 at the back. We're not going to worry about it anymore. We are only going to be working on these stitches on needle 1. And this is how your, needle, your heel begins. You've isolated stitches and you're just going to work on these and leave those alone. Okay, so now we are going to uh, start making this heel flap. We're going to start knitting this now. And this particular heel flap is, you always stitch the first stitch on both ends, on this end and this end. No, no only the first stitch on your, on your needle. You always slip that one purl wise. And then going across this way, we'll slip the first stitch purl wise. And then we will knit one, slip one purl wise, knit one, slip one purl wise, all the way across. Then we're going to turn and we're going to slip the first stitch purl wise. And then we are just going to purl all the way across. And we're going to do that for 32 rows. And this is what it's going to look like. It's going to, this one's quite worn, but it's going to be quite bumpy. And actually what we're doing is we're double knitting. This is coming out, this is going to be a very chunky heel. Let me see if I can get you to see this properly. This can be a very, it's going to be a double knit heel. A slip one, knit one, that's double knit. So this heel in particular is really good if you're making a man sock like this. Personally, I don't like wearing this heel because it's too thick for me. Um, if I put, a, put uh, my running shoes on, I find it too thick because this is, don't forget, this is at the back of your foot. It's not at the bottom of your foot. It's behind your foot. So this is what is going to rest on your shoe or your boot at the back. So while this heel is really great for um, durability, I don't care for it in comfort, but that's just me, you know, but this is the heel we're going to learn because that's what the pattern says. The heel that I usually do for my own socks is I just, I, I, I isolate these stitches in the same way. I move the stitches around so that I have 32 stitches on this needle. But what I do is I slip the first stitch purl wise and I knit all the way across. I turn, I slip the first stitch purl wise and I purl all the way across. It's a little easier, but we're going to follow this pattern. Okay, so we're going to start working on the 32 rows. I'll do a few rows on camera and then I'll finish the rest off camera. So we're going to bring our yarn to the front and slip this stitch off purl wise and then we're going to knit one. And then we're going to slip one purl wise and knit one. Slip one purl wise, this is terrible yarn, and knit one. And we're going to do this all the way across. I'm hitting the table with the needles. I'm at a really odd angle here because of the camera. I wanted, I want to, of course you can't see what I'm doing because my hands are in the way. Let's see if I can fix that a bit. I'm going to just wind you up a little higher. I don't know if this will work or not. Can you see better now? Slip one pearlwise, knit one. 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 
let's put one pearl wise knit one slip 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 one pearl wise knit one oh I lost a stitch Pearl one, knit one. The only thing that I think you will find is that when you've only got all these stitches on two needles, the first kind of the first few rows are going to be really awkward. You could split these two up and put them on two separate needles to open this up a little bit. Um, and I recommend you do that as long as you make sure when you finish this part that you put them back on one needle because they, they do have to be on one needle. So now I've done that, I'm going to turn and I'm going to slip the first stitch purlwise. And then I'm going to purl every stitch across. So what well, was one, two, three, four, five, six. Seven, eight, nine, ten, eleven, twelve, thirteen, fourteen, fifteen, sixteen, seventeen. 1 and 2. And what are we going to do right now? We're going to mark down 1 and 2. Write them down so that you can just knit away, but make sure you write them down so that you know when you've done 32 rows, you're done. So you're going to continue doing these two rows for a total of 32 rows. So what you're going to end up with is 16 loops on this side and 16 loops on this side because one loop is for the knit side and one loop is for the purl side. So I'm going to let you do that and I'm going to finish the heel flap and then I will get back to you with our next step on our heel, which is the heel turn. Okay, I am back and I have completed the heel flap, all 32 rows. So now we are going to do the heel turn or what some patterns call the heel cap. But before we do that, I just want to show you the loops. Let's look on this side. No, let's look on this side. Okay, so you can see these little loops all along here. We have 16 on this side. And we have 16 loops on this side. So those loops are going to be picked up after we turn our heel. So if you have knit a full um, leg, a cuff and a full leg, and then this heel flap, you will have something that looks like this. Oh, oh, I just dropped something. You will have something that looks like this. So here would be your cuff, your leg, and your heel flap. That's how your your sock should be looking. Not, not with this pattern on it, but just plain. 
it'll be looking kind of odd like this one. So now if you hold this up um, like this, of course, I'm having a problem with my camera. There we go. If you hold it up like this, you can start to see where the position of that heel flap is. This is the top of your leg and that's where your heel is going to hit the floor at the bottom of that. So now we have to turn our heel and there's there's all kinds of different ways of turning a heel. Um, most of them are done with a short row idea which means that you are going to, you want this, this heel now has to fold in half like this because your, your sock isn't as, as wide as this. Your sock is half as wide. Remember, here's your center of the back of your foot. So you're going you're gonna to want to turn this like this and then you're going to flatten this out. So that is what the heel, uh, the turning the heel or the heel cap is all about. And the way that we do this is in short rows. Now, there's all kinds of different ways of doing short rows as well, but we're going to follow this pattern. Okay, so what it says to turn the heel is knit 18. So we're going to knit 18 along till we get to here, whatever 18 is. And then we're going to slip, slip, knit. Slip, slip, knit is you slip a stitch as if to knit. Then you slip the next stitch as if to knit and then you knit the two together. And then you're going to knit one, and then you're going to turn. So it will only be about here. So we're going to turn our work then, and we are going to slip one purlwise. We're still doing the slip one purlwise, so we'll slip this first stitch purlwise. And then we are going to purl five, and then we are going to purl two together, and then we're going to purl one, and then we're going to turn. So there's always going to be stitches left unworked. But what we're doing is we're pulling our, our heel inwards. We're going to be decreasing every row, one stitch. But we're decreasing in a way that we're not decreasing on the ends, we're decreasing in the middle. So that's where that little V that I showed you um, just hold on, let me grab the sock. I have my camera in a very stupid place. And I'll tell you why in a minute. So this is what we're doing. Here's that heel flap that we made. And now we're, we're bringing that in, starting in the center and working out. But we are decreasing from center to the edge. And we'll make this little diamond here. And I've changed the color again of my yarn because I want you to see the difference between the heel flap and the heel turn. So I had recorded all of this already. I made the heel, I had turned the heel on here. And when I, um, when I went to look at this video, I was out of frame. My hands, I was saying, Oh, can you see this? And this is what you were seeing. So I have the camera set up on a tripod in front of me, wedged between my belly and the table. We'll see how this is going to go. But I want you to be able to see what I'm doing. So let's get started. We will start first. The first two rows are sort of a setup row where we're just setting up the stitches for um, the this the short rows so what we're going to do first is i'm going to find the right color here what we're going to do first is we're going to knit 18. oh this thing is moving on me just hold on a second i gotta get this camera in the right spot i have to get a overhead situation here okay I hope you're going to be able to see this. Perhaps I have to go up a bit. Just bear with me. Okay. Hopefully this will work. All right. Now where was 
this way. We're going to knit 18, slip, slip, knit, knit one, and turn. Oh, see, it's still not right. Maybe this will be better. Knit 18. Oh. Hold on one second, okay? Okay, we'll have to try it this way. So we're going to knit 18. Okay, we have knit 18. Now we are going to slip, slip, knit. So we're going to slip the first stitch as if to knit it. And we're going to slip the second stitch as if to knit. We're going to put our left needle in. And we're going to knit two together. And then we're going to knit one. And then we're going to turn. Now, just let me get this down here. See, we still have all these stitches left on this needle, but we're turning anyway. Okay. Now, we're going to slip the first stitch purl-wise, like we have been doing all along. So slip that one purl-wise. We're going to purl five. One. Two. Four, five. And we're going to purl two together and we're going to purl one. And see, we still have all these stitches left. Doesn't matter. We're going to turn. So now we have set up our, our heel to do the decreases. So don't forget, we have our little piece of paper, and we're going to write down set up rows. Put a check mark beside it. Okay. Now we're going to work two rows over and over again. And we're going to go from 32 stitches, what we had on the needle, down to 18 stitches. So the first row, we're going to slip one purl wise, like we have been doing all along. Okay, slip one purlwise, and we're going to knit to one stitch before the gap. So here is the gap, right here. So we're going to knit to this stitch. We're not going to knit that stitch, we're just going to knit up to it. So we'll do that. We'll knit to one stitch before the gap. And I have to tell you, I know you've heard me say, this is terrible yarn. I could not have found the worst yarn to do this with. It splits, it unravels, it untwists. It's horrible. Anyway, okay, we're at one stitch. Here's the gap, and we're at one stitch before the gap. So we are going to slip the stitch as if to knit. And then we're going to slip the next stitch as if to knit. We're going to put our left needle in. 
and we're going to knit these two together and then we're going to knit one more and then we're going to turn and there's these stitches left okay we're going to turn now the second row we are going to slip the first or slip the first stitch purl wise and we're going to purl to one stitch in front of the gap there's the gap so we're going to purl up to this stitch and not including that stitch. So we'll purl to that stitch before the gap. One more. And now we're going to purl this stitch and this stitch together. We're going to close that gap. We're going to purl these two stitches together, the one before and the one after the gap. And then we're going to purl one more and we're going to turn. So that's the second row. And you're going to mark this down. You did row one and you did row two. I've marked it on my book or on my little page. And you're going to repeat these two, two rows until you only have 18 stitches left. So I'm going to do a couple more and then I'm going to go off camera and finish it and show you the last few. So, okay, row one, we're going back to row one. You're going to slip the first stitch purl wise. And then you're going to knit to one stitch before the gap. So here's the gap here. You're going to knit up to that stitch. There's the gap. There's one stitch before the gap. So we're going to slip this stitch as if to knit, slip the next stitch as if to knit, and knit the two together. And then we're going to knit one more stitch. And then we're going to turn. That was row one. Row two, slip the first stitch purl wise, purl up to one stitch before the gap. There's the gap. So we're going to purl all the way up to here. Okay, we're at one stitch before the gap. So we're going to purl the one in front of the gap and the one behind the gap together and close that gap. Oh, there we go again. See what I mean about this stuff splitting? It's terrible. Okay, and then we're going to purl one more and we're going to turn and we're going to write it down that we did two rows. So we're going to continue to do this for 18 stitches until we have 18 stitches. But you can already see how it's pulling this together and we're getting this little flat part which is going to be underneath your heel on the floor. So I'm going to continue this. I'm going to come back before I finish it completely because I want you to see what happens on the last two rows. So you continue and I'll continue off camera. Okay. I am back. I'm just threading my hand through here. So I'm on, I've only got two more rows to do. One more row one on one more row two. You can see I only have one stitch on each side of the gap left. So um, I'll show you how we're going to end this. You see how we have a heel now? Okay, so we're going to finish up this and then we're going to talk about what we've done. So we're back to doing row one. We're going to slip our first stitch purl wise. And we're going to knit across to one stitch before the gap. So this time we're knitting all the way across.
there. Sorry, I didn't. I had the camera a little bit too close. This is better. Two more stitches. Okay, so there's the gap. There's the stitch before. So we're going to slip this as if to knit it. And we're going to slip this one as if to knit. And we're going to knit the two together like we have been doing. But there's no more knit one because we're at the end. So we're just going to turn. And we're going to slip this first stitch as if to purl. Or slip this stitch purl wise, sorry. And we're going to purl to the end. And it's going to be the same thing. When we get to the end, there's only going to be the purl two together and no purl one. And when we're finished this row, we should have only 18 stitches on our needle. And we have been writing this down. Every time we finish a row, we've been putting it on our little piece of paper. There's the gap. There's the two stitches. We're going to purl those two together. And we're done. We've used all the stitches on our needle. Let's count and make sure we have 18. 2, 4, 6, 2, 4, 6, 8, 10, 12, 14, 16, 18. And we have basically finished the heel. Now, I said before that the heel was in three parts. For all intents and purposes, this is the heel. The last part of the heel is just closing up the, the foot. But um, this is your heel is done. So now you can see, if I turn it this way, you can see that you can't really see that it's going to be like this, but it is because it's on this long needle. So if it was on two needles, you would see that it has turned. But this is the bottom part of your foot now. This is where your, your foot is going to be on. This is the back of your foot. And that is how it's going to be. Like that. So now the next step. Congratulations, by the way. You've made your first heel. And I think you'll agree with me. It really wasn't all that difficult. You just have to follow the pattern. Write down every row that you're doing. So that if you forget what you've done, you can go back and say, oh, okay, I, I just did row one. Now I've got to do row two. That's when, especially in the heel part, when you are making this heel, it's very, very important to, to write down on a piece of paper what you just did. Because you will forget um, which row you're at and where you are. So you could even, you could even count your stitches each row and put that, as well so that you can count and say oh, okay I've got this many that was that's where I am however you want to do it to make it easy on yourself um, there's nothing wrong with writing things down at the beginning so you've done the heel the next part of the heel is called the gusset and that is where now we are going to put we're going to go back to using three needles, but as well, we're picking up all of these stitches. Now, I'm not going to do the gusset on this video. We're going to do the gusset on the next video because it's a little bit longer. Um, it, it takes too long to add it to this video. So for now, we've done the rib, we've done the leg, we've done the heel flap, and we've turned our heel. And we are actually almost ready to do a foot and then from there on it's smooth sailing again. So I hope um, that I have explained this and shown this to you in a way that uh, you can understand. And I hope you, you give it a try now. Don't be afraid. Just, just you know, if, if you make a mistake, rip it out, do it again. This is your learning and you can make mistakes. I've made lots and lots of mistakes while I was learning and I still make mistakes. 
I can't tell you how many. So that's going to be a wrap for this video. Next one um, will be the gusset and we will, I will show you how to, because once you pick up all these stitches, you have 18 there, you have 32 here, you have 16 there and 16 there. Um, somehow we have to get back to our original 64 stitches because the foot and the leg are the same amount of stitches around. So we'll do that on our next video. Thank you for watching. Good luck with your heels. I know you can do it. And I'll talk to you real soon. Bye for now.